The summer months go by way too fast, don't they? Winter will be here before you know it. So before it hits 32 degrees, you need to winterize your motorhome. Now, there are a number of different ways to do this. So to show us how to winterize, our special guest, get excited. You ready? Here he comes. Oh man, winter! Not coming out there. I said, Old Man Winter! What is this? This is not Old Man Winter. Where is the Old Man Winter costume? I said, Tom, get an Old Man Winter costume. First of all, stop saying Old Man Winter. Second of all, you gave me two hours to get this done, and all they had left were Ice Princess costumes, and I'm not wearing this wig. Works for me! Let's winterize! So you're gonna start with a half full fresh water tank. Use that fresh water to help you flush your black and gray tanks. Both of those should be about a third full. This is also a great time to pour in some tank cleaner and drive around a few miles to work it around. Now you're ready to drain those holding tanks. Just like when you're dumping the tanks at a campground, empty the black tank first, then your gray. Now, completely drain the fresh water tank. You'll want those tanks to be empty so nothing freezes in the valves or in the tanks. There's still going to be a little H2O in that fresh water tank. You want all your tanks to be empty so nothing freezes in the valves or those tanks. If you can get your hands on an air compressor, you can simply blow the lines out. Now you do need a 3 quarter inch hose connector and an air chuck. First thing you need to do is open all the faucets, including the toilet and the shower head sprayer. Open any other water lines that are closed. With this adapter, connect the air compressor to the city water connection. Now this is important. To avoid any damage, do not exceed 55 pounds per square inch. If your coach has a water filter, take it off and drain it. Replace it with a diverter tube. What happens here is the antifreeze will then bypass the water line and not make its way into the filter assembly. Turn on the water pump. Allow it to run to clear all the water from the lines. Turn your water pump off. Now, open all low point and water tank drains. Now, these are the drains for the water tank and the water lines. In theory, they're located at the lowest point in the plumbing system, so all the water will run out and not be trapped in the lines. Drain your water heater, but make sure the water heater has cooled down before you drain it. Remove the water heater drain plug. It's located near the bottom of the water heater. Now, turn on your air compressor and blow out the water lines. Again, it's important you do not exceed 55 pounds per square inch. What we need to do now is pour some RV antifreeze down the drains. How do you talk me into this stuff? Oh, it's not me. It says here in the manual. Look, number 12. Sometimes Tom needs to wear a dress to winterize. It doesn't say that in the manual. You wrote that on a post-it note. Pour two cups or so of RV antifreeze into the drains, the P-traps, and the water tanks. If you do not have an air compressor, you have a couple of other options. Find your water pump and remove the inlet hose. That would be the line with the strainer. Take the line off and attach a hose and run it into the gallon of RV antifreeze. Doing it this way keeps the antifreeze out of the fresh water tank. Remember, you want to bypass your water heater. You're gonna close the top and bottom valve, open the one in the middle. Turn the water pump switch on. Open your faucets. Once you get the pink flowing, you're good. Move on to the next faucet, both hot and cold in the bathroom. Hold down the flusher on the toilet, and don't forget the outdoor shower. The final method is called the wet method, and this is where you take four to six gallons of RV antifreeze and you pour it directly into your fresh water tank. We are gonna take you through all the steps and how to do this. We do not recommend it because once you have RV antifreeze in your fresh water tank, guess what your fresh water will taste like? RV antifreeze. After you have completely drained all the tanks, Pour four to six gallons of RV antifreeze into the fresh water tank. Turn on your water pump, get it flowing. Open the furthest faucet or water valve from the pump and work your way through the entire system. Go one at a time until you see that RV antifreeze flowing. You want to have about two cups of antifreeze flow out before you turn that faucet off. Do this with all your water lines, showers, tubs, toilet, washing machines, dishwashers, ice makers, and outside showers. Go ahead and leave that antifreeze in the sinks, the washer, the shower, the P-traps, and the toilets during storage. This way, it will protect those lines. You can also open your faucets about halfway to take pressure off the valve seats during storage. Then go ahead and wipe all those fixtures clean, and you're done with that part. 
While you're wiping down those fixtures, go ahead, wipe down those countertops and tables. Clean out your fridge. Leave both doors open. A box of baking soda wouldn't be a bad idea. It's also a good time to close all your curtains and blinds. A little trick here to keep the curtains and blinds from fading is to put some foil or some paper between the windows and the curtains. Give your AC one more run so that compressor seal is lubricated. Moving outside, clean and wax your coach. Oil your locks and your hinges. Climb up and seal that roof trim. While you're up here, you can cover the vents and AC units to keep critters from making a winter home. If you get a heavy snow, you're going to need to remove it from the roof. Block up your coach with wooden blocks or manufactured jack stands on a hard level surface. Partially deflate the tires and cover them. If possible, remove your batteries and store them in a cool, dry place. You may want to check them once in a while and charge them if you need to. Store your coach with the fuel tank full. You'll want to prevent condensation buildup. It's also not a bad idea to start her up once a month and have a walkthrough to check for leaks or condensation. And while you're doing that, keep that door open and maybe open a window or two to air it out. Now that you're winterized, all you have to do is wait until spring. You realize this isn't even my color? Tom, let it go.